What's up, Captains? Today's interview is with Andrew Latour, who is the founder of Gemba Red, which is this red light panel I've got on behind me. Because in today's episode, we are talking about everything you need to know about red light therapy, what it is, who it's for, what the benefits are, which newsflash, it's basically a panacea. Red light therapy has a whole host of benefits. We talk about a bunch on this episode. And if you guys want to get the hookup on a Gemba Red red light panel, you can head over to GembaRed.com and enter code Captain Morgan. That will save you 10% on any of Gemba Red's products. Not only do they have these red light panels, but they also make a desk lamp, uh, completely red, and uh, book lights as well that you can clamp onto your books so you can read and work at night without disrupting your circadian rhythm from the harmful blue light that most people use in the evening. So uh, again, to get the hookup, use code Captain Morgan. A lot of people have been asking me because I've been talking about red light for a while now, if I have a discount code on any red light brands and I haven't until now, and I finally do. And what I like about Gemba Red is that they are extremely high quality while also extremely affordable because a lot of those brands out there, specifically Juve is extremely pricey, which is uh, why a lot of people haven't got them because they can't afford it. Gemba Red, the, the prices are significantly reduced, extremely affordable. Plus, you save 10% on top of that with code Captain Morgan. On top of that, they are extremely low in EMFs. They are extremely low in Flickr, both of which we're going to talk about on today's episode. And again, super high quality. Uh, Andrew is transparent with all of the measurements and specificities of each panel, which is another thing I love about them, uh, all the, the information that they share. They're, they're not just another big company that's just trying to make money. They Andrew truly wants you to get the most bang for your buck, to get the highest quality product and feel good about what you're getting. So again, uh, click the link in the show notes, use code Captain Morgan to get the hookup on one of the highest quality and most affordable red light panels. Next up, I want to give you another word from our sponsors. Uh, I mentioned EMFs. So in this episode, Andrew mentions that some of the red light panels, especially some of the cheap knockoff ones that you might find on Amazon are high in EMFs, which as you know, I hope EMFs uh, stand for electromagnetic frequencies or fields, and they cause oxidative stress in the body. This causes a whole host of issues like uh, headaches, brain fog, fatigue, irritability, uh, trouble sleeping, and even more chronic issues like cancer, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, things like that. So Definitely something you're going to want to avoid, especially if you're using this red light therapy to reduce stress and give you energy. You don't want the EMFs to be negating all of those benefits that you're getting. So this episode is brought to you by Lambs, which is my favorite EMF blocking clothing company. Got their sticker right up there. This is their beanie that I wear all the time. I wear it to bed to protect my billion dollar supercomputer, aka my brain from the effects of oxidative stress. Uh, I also wear their shirt when traveling especially, and they just came out with a new design that fits much better than their original shirt. It's super comfortable uh, and their underwear as well, which again are super comfortable. They came out with a redesign on those as well. And you can get the hookup if you go over to getlambs.com and enter code Captain Morgan. Another cool thing about lambs is that for each purchase, they also donate five meals to hungry families through Feeding America. So it's a win-win. You get to protect yourself from the effects of oxidative stress, and you get to help feed hungry families in need. So again, use code Captain Morgan, head over to getlambs.com. Click the link in the show notes. And last but certainly not least, this episode is brought to you by WaveBlock, which is this EMF blocking sticker that I've got on the back of my phone. Because again, as Andrew mentions in uh, today's episode, all electronic devices emit EMFs. Uh, definitely including your cell phone, which are much higher than normal uh, EMFs emitted from other electronic devices. Cell phones have a lot of EMF radiation, uh, especially if you're on 5G and Wi-Fi all the time. And the thing is, cell phone companies know this. They say in the terms and conditions not to hold your phone right up to your face when you're taking a phone call, because then you're getting that uh, EMF directly into your brain. The cell phone companies know this. Yet we all know Nobody reads the terms and conditions, right? I know I don't. Um, so that is why I use this wave block sticker. All you got to do is stick it and you're protected. It blocks some of the EMFs from getting released on to you. So 
Keep your phone in airplane mode always when you're not using it. And I also recommend getting this WaveBlock sticker. They also make stickers for your AirPods. So you're not getting that Bluetooth radiation directly into your brain. Covers it up. So to get the hookup on anything from WaveBlock, head over to waveblock.com. You get an exclusive discount for being a listener of the Captain's Lifestyle Podcast. All you got to do is enter code Captain Morgan. That will save you 20% on any EMF blocking sticker from Wave block. All right, now let's get into today's episode with Andrew Latour. Hello, hello, and welcome aboard another episode of the Captain's Lifestyle Podcast. This is your captain speaking, Taylor Morgan. On today's episode, we have another expert in light. His name is Andrew Latour, and he is the founder of Gemba Red, which is this red light panel that I've got back here. Should have turned it on for this episode. Uh, Andrew is an experienced chemical and materials engineer, and he learned about biohacking way back in 2015 while he was at a raw vegan retreat. At the time, he was obese, pre-diabetic, and had chronic sinus issues. He embraced a biohacking methodology for the same reason that many people do. He was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Over the past few years, he has revolutionized his health, regained his energy, and improved his immune system. Andrew, welcome to the Captain's Lifestyle Podcast. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Of course. So, yeah, as I was saying, you are the founder of Gemba Red. So, actually, first, before we get into that, I, I have to ask, are you still vegan? No, I was only vegan just for that uh, <laughs> week-long retreat. And, Good. you know, but I went, you know, I went into it from kind of a sad diet mm. into a vegan retreat. And that like just really opens your eyes up to like, wow, there, you know, there is a lot of power in, in the food you eat and what and what you eat. And even at the retreat, um, it was called the Raw Food Institute in uh in up in Simsbury, Connecticut. And even in the retreat, they're teaching you about biohacking. They're talking, they they introduced me to the the bulletproof diet. And so even that's not vegan because you put butter in the coffee and you, you know, and you, so I got into more like, yeah, the keto diet and bulletproof diet, but I did do, you know, incorporating more raw, you know, raw vegetables and raw foods. And, um, you know, that was kind of my first step to, you know, taking control of my health and, and realizing that, that there was yeah, a lot more to do. And, and, you know, sometimes you need kind of that dramatic shift to, you know, at least try something new to see, see what a change you can make. Unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately people, um, I've heard this analogy before. It's like, uh, you get the, the tickle with the feather, like, Hey, there might be something wrong. And then you get smacked by the brick. Like, Hey, you should probably pay attention to this issue. And then most people don't listen to those first two. And then all of a sudden they get smacked by the Mack truck and then they wake up yeah. and they're like, Oh shit, I got to do something about this. Uh, and yeah, if you go from the sad, AKA standard American diet to anything else, you're going to see dramatic improvements because unfortunately the standard American diet is, is sad. It, it is just that. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's, I mean, you can really latch onto whatever you shift to first from that you can get amazing gains weight loss more energy you know and again doesn't matter vegan paleo keto you know all these things so um that you know that was a huge step for me but then i you know i was still searching for you know more and more techniques more biohacks that i could do it didn't seem to fully address like my energy and my sleep problems Mm -hmm. And so that's why I got more and more into understanding how light was affecting me and, and what, you know, what I can do with, with light therapies and um, things like that as well. Yeah. Speaking of that, we were introduced to each other through my good friend, Phil Welch, whose Instagram handle is light trumps food. And a lot of people don't know about this yet. They still think that like nutrition and exercise are the most important things you can do for overall health and happiness. When in reality, light and optimizing our light environment, which I've recorded podcasts on before is extremely important. I would say more so important than what you eat and uh, how much or how intensely you exercise is the quality of light that you're getting and the timing of that light. So talk to me about how you first discover that because again, most people aren't aware of this. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I just started, you know, you can start really cheap and easy. I started with blue blocking glasses at night. Um, you can get the UVEX orange glasses for like 10 bucks on Amazon. 
Um, so it's not a big investment to start taking control of your, your lighting environment. Started wearing that at night, you know, getting better sleep. And when you, you know, when you start getting better sleep, it's better quality sleep, even if you don't realize, you know, you could sleep eight hours a day, but you might not have good quality. And then once you get start getting better quality, you might have less food cravings. You'll have more energy to do stuff and exercise and go out and just more motivation to take care of yourself. Um, so, you know, optimizing that circadian rhythm, getting out into the sunshine, into the light in the morning, maybe grounding as well. Um, those are kind of the, the basis for it. It's reducing the light at night, wearing blue blockers, and then, you know, getting more light in the morning or the outdoors and during the day as well. So how did you become aware of that? Uh, you know, I was following, you know, every podcaster I could find at the time of, of you know, and every once in a while, um, they would introduce someone talking about blue blockers and light therapies and light hacking. And, um, you know, I was I was just doing all kinds of research for for what I could do. And this was after you had gotten hit by that semi truck. Yeah, right? it's like the, right. the wake up call. Yeah, I was, I mean, I was aware of a few brands like Gunner Glasses because, you know, I was, I was kind of a gamer back then. Um, so I had some Gunners, but then I kind of upgraded to the, the Uvex as well for, for specifically for nighttime. Um, so, yeah, that, that was kind of the progression. And then, I, you know, some of the biohackers like Dave Asprey or whoever, they would tell you like affordable hacks of like, oh, LED lights. And, you know, four or five years ago, they were pretty expensive. So they were kind of un- unobtainable. Um, and there were only a few companies out there doing it. And then, uh, so I started with a heat lamp with like one of the, you know, red incandescent heat lamp, the 250 watt near and you know, some people call it like near and near infrared bulbs or whatever they're, you know, they're heat lamps are hot. Um, and I used it for kind of my back pain. I used it in the morning as kind of a light therapy. Uh, so again, these are only like 10 or 20 bucks. If you get the brooder lamp. Uh, from your local hardware store and you can start with red light you know it's a form of red light therapy it's it's got the heat it's more of a heat therapy um but you know again it's still a great place to get started and get that warmth and you get that energy in the morning you get the right kind of light um so again you know there's all these great hacks you can get started with and that's what led me to you know like i said there were not a lot of options on the market and i wasn't satisfied with what i was seeing um, so that's why I eventually started my own business with, with my own, uh, led panels. Gotcha. Yeah. That was my next question is why. So it was the, yeah. the, the lack of, um, would you say that the lack of variety and the affordability of them? Yeah. The, well, affordability was a big problem. And I was going to some of those, um, original bulletproof conferences in Pasadena. I think I went to like the, um, 2017 and, and maybe the 2016, uh, bulletproof conferences where they were rolling out, uh, you know, some of these original brands and, but people still knew they were like really expensive. Um, so, you know, I started looking, looking for suppliers and I started looking for my own designs. And the other problem that I had was a lack of transparency for the product. So it wasn't just the cost, but they weren't getting third party testing. They weren't being transparent about um, the intensity, the output of the panels, the wavelengths. Um, the EMFs and flicker and things like that. Um, something that I started my business on. So, you know, it wasn't just undercutting the cost, but I was also, you know, adding more value of education and the science and getting the truth out there of, of you know, what, what does this really mean? Gotcha. Yeah. So now let's get into the fun stuff. So before we go any further, uh, talk to us about the major benefits of red light therapy and who it's for what it can be used for things like that yeah i mean red light therapy is amazing like if i just start listing it out it's, you're gonna be like is this guy <laughs> some sort of uh you know snake oil it's salesman. like a uh, uh, what's that word panacea like something that's yeah, good for almost everything just a, yeah just a cure-all just a you know found a youth kind of thing um you know so i like to usually i start maybe backwards of like the mechanism is that it's supporting your mitochondria. It's helping your mitochondria. And we have mitochondria in all of our cells and our skin, our organs, our brain. Um, you know, we need those to work well. And there's a lot of correlations that we know now that it's really the quality and the functionality of our mitochondria that's causing a lot of these chronic diseases if you have a kind of deficient mitochondria. So 
that's why we can kind of get into these benefits and the big range of applications. So um, obviously there's a lot of applications for skincare for, you know, and, uh, you know, I can't make a lot of medical claims about my specific devices, but these are just general claims that have been researched. You can go on PubMed. There's uh, over 5,000 studies you can find on, find on PubMed with various forms of, you know, red light therapy devices. Um, so, you know, you can get into skincare with uh, anti-aging, anti-wrinkles, um, and, you know, uh, acne kind of applications. Um, so that's huge. You can see, you know, a lot of, um, you know, even clinics and they'll sell you like LED facials and things like that. Um, uh, it's, I'll, you know, I'll stop you right there because I've got a, yeah. a, a personal example of that. Uh, I had a client, uh, this was uh, maybe a year and a half ago, who struggled with acne. He was, I think he was uh, 18 or 19 and he was just going off to college and um, he struggled with acne and stress and like sleep and all those things. And so we, we dialed in cause this was back before I knew how important light was. So we dialed in his nutrition, we got him sleeping better. And then I told him about red light therapy and I, I had him go to this like wellness center that they had, uh, like full body red light panels. And he started doing that yeah. every day. Nice. And then the combination of all of those things, the acne just like went away. It was incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's really great. Um, sometimes for the acne treatments, um, they'll combine blue light um, because blue light can can also be antibacterial for some of the uh, bacteria that might be causing the acne. But okay, yeah, I would sunlight, say blue yeah, light plus and red sunlight. Light. Yeah, sunlight's got it all. Sunlight's got blue light, UV, and it can kill, you know, the bad bacteria as well. Um, but, you know, I, I would just start with red and near infrared light, too, because it helps kind of more with the inflammation. That's a big mechanism for how red light therapy works, it helps reduce inflammation. So, um, you know, if you have an inflammatory response on your skin, then, then that's what could be happening. Um, another, another big uh, application is athletic recovery for fitness, for wellness, um, you know, and there's, there's multiple um, studies on, you know, measuring different muscle groups and how well they recover, or sometimes they do the red light therapy before an athletic workout and you can have, better performance during the, the athletic, uh, performance. So, um, so both ways you can use it for recovery and to enhance, if you use it before it kind of enhances your session. Do you, cause that's how I first heard about uh, and like started diving deeper into red light was, uh, when I was a CrossFit coach and training to be a CrossFit athlete, that's how I learned about all this stuff. Uh, and so I knew about it for recovery specifically, which yes, it's, fantastic for recovering from workouts, like <laughs> seriously, a game changer. Um, but then you mentioned for performance, uh, pre event, do you think the mechanism of that is due to the upregulation of the mitochondria or the vasodilatory effect? That, I mean, you know, I always appreciate, yeah, I always appreciate there's multiple things going on. It's so complex. Um, you know, we have this mindset, we really want one variable to, to answer everything, but, um, I, yeah, I can appreciate it could be multiple things. One of the big things is, um, you said with, uh, vasodilation is also nitric oxide release. And sometimes it seems like the nitric oxide is being bound up, um, with this, uh, cytochrome C oxidase molecule that's absorbing the light and it sort of releases the nitric oxide and that nitric oxide itself people are selling supplements for that and helping with the 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 circulation and vasodilation um so red light therapy also increases that and so there's also kind of this time release aspect of it i was i just kind of finished um a blog about this with um how often you should do red light therapy and one of the things was that it's about three to six hours after red light therapy has been done, after it's all done. Um, you know, and that's another thing that we think it's only happening while you're treating yourself. You're getting the benefits afterwards as well. Three to six hours after is that peak of ATP and the peak of some of these metabolites that are, are improving. And that's the like really key window if you really want to optimize your uh, workout with it. So, so three, yeah, three to six hours after the red light therapy is finished, you get this upregulation of this peak of upregulation of the ATP of certain metabolites that they can measure in the blood. And they think that's where you get the best performance boost. But I wouldn't let that kind of stop you if you can't, you know, optimize your session, just do it whenever you can as consistently as you can. We can get into that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, athletic 
recovery and, and performance is huge. And also for brain health as well, you know, with, you know, <laughs> clearing out your brain fog or um, getting a little bit more energy, more alertness during the day. And there's more, more and more studies coming out about um, brain diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. And again, you know, if it's related to the performance of the brain, the mitochondria in the brain, the inflammation in the brain. Um, and a lot of times you don't have to directly, you know, laser your brain to get these benefits. It happens systemically through the body. Um, some of the studies are really neat that they can treat the tibia or the bones or even the forehead. And you get this, you know, you get into the bloodstream and maybe you're producing more stem cells because it's stimulating your bones and your bone marrow and you get the stem cell release and that helps with reducing inflammation. And that's where the real benefits are coming from. Um, so brain applications are huge. Um, and then wound healing, you know, things like that. NASA studied wound healing, um, you know, anything that kind of, kind of can increase that, um, uh, you know, rate of, of healing and new, um, new, new kind of skin. Um, there's some studies on improving eye health as well, that the red light helps, you know, helps with the mitochondria in the eyes. And, and you know, there's a few studies on improving eye health and reducing the effects of the blue light damage that we're getting from, from screens and things like that. So um, that's really exciting too. A lot of people want to maintain their eye health and, and kind of reduce, you know, the risk of, of uh, macular de degeneration. On that note, I, cause I saw, I think it was your blog post about this. Should we look directly at the red light panel? Cause I've always right. done that. But then yeah, there, yeah. you said something about it could like heat up your eyes and potentially cause cataracts. So tell right. us about this. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a few safety aspects. Red light therapy is super safe. Um, you'd really have to be trying to hurt yourself with it. But <laughs> with the, you know, I mean, like that's what I really try to, you know, caution is that. But there are a few aspects we need to appreciate that if you have too high of an intensity, you can heat up your eyes and, and, and cause some sort of damage. So there are some guidelines on it. Um, I think something around, you know, uh, around like 50 milliwatts per centimeter squared. If you stare directly at the light for 10 minutes straight, like then you can create some damage. So like I said, you really have to be trying to okay. cause damage and shoving your eyes right in front of an LED and staring at it for a long time. But, you know, people should be aware of, of you know, a few, few of these safety concerns um, you don't want to be using it recklessly or for too long. And generally, as long as you're looking, you can look away from the light, you can look off to the side or above or down at your phone. I don't care. Um, you can, you know, you can avoid a lot, all that because if you're staring down directly towards it, that's where your eyes kind of concentrating the light into your back of your eye. So um, as long as you don't stare directly at it, generally you're safe. Um, again, there's, you know, certain phot photosensitizing drugs people might be on some people might have more sensitivity or if you just want to feel more comfortable and wear some sort of um i did some reviews on different kind of um welding goggles that you can wear that reduce red and near infrared light um reduce that intensity that your eyes feel and it can just be more comfortable so some people do it out of an, an excess of precaution some people just want to feel more comfortable but Generally, if you you know if you've got a responsible intensity from from your panel from your manufacturer, and you're not staring at it or doing anything uh, silly, then there's really no issue. So mm -hmm. we are getting into a region that you know some of my competitors are trying too hard to keep increasing the intensity just for marketing purposes, and you know you are going to get that um, you're going down the wrong route with that. You don't want too much intensity. Mm. Yeah. More intensity is not necessarily better. Right. Um, and there, there's a, a biphasic dose response. And this is, you know, kind of true for any medicine, for water, for air. Um, too much of something is, is not good for you. So, hormesis. Um, you know, yeah, hormesis, yeah. exactly. So, yep. um, so that's what we, we, I like to caution people and make sure that we're sticking with the science and not going too far into the marketing of fallacies of, of getting too much power or intensity or dosage more isn't better yeah well i do like to stare directly at it but not for 10 yeah. minutes straight i, I look exactly to the side, I, I look out the window mm -hmm. i i do check my phone sometimes i take the pictures to promote gemba red sure. um and i imagine it also depends on the distance you are away from it so i'm guessing you don't want to be right up to the panel staring directly into it Right. Yeah. Right. And certain, depending on the panel, um, most of my body lights, you can be six inches away, 12 inches away. 
um, you know, and, and do it at your comfort level or do what feels right for your body. Um, the closer you are to your panel is, is the more intensity. And there's also this aspect of having skin contact that helps kind of increase the penetration into the skin because your skin can reflect a lot of the light. Um, but it depends and on hair the design. Also. I, hair I read block, that today. Yeah, hair yep. will block it. Yeah. If you're, if you got, got too Which, much hair, it'll, yeah, this, it'll be a, this is an issue. And, <laughs> and do you feel like, do you feel like your chest warming up? Like in, in, in those areas, do you feel it? The warmth? Absolutely. I mean, basically yeah. my whole body is, is hairy. So, um, I, I read that I think yesterday on your blog that, that hair <laughs> can reduce some of it, but I'm not really worried because I get plenty of sun exposure anyways, which right. As and, we mentioned, has the red wavelengths of light. Yeah, and but it's interesting because you'll feel it. If you have dark hair, you're going to feel that it kind of almost transforming into warmth into your yeah. into your body. And oh, it's um, very there's warm. even yeah, yeah. So there's even studies with like vet, veterinary where they'll use red light therapy on the horse or on on the animal through the fur, which is kind of interesting because the fur will block it, but maybe it's absorbing it and kind of just being more of a heat aspect to it as well. Um, mm -hmm. where if you really want to increase the penetration, you got to shave the animal. Um, so if you really need that extra penetration, if someone's trying to treat their brain, you might need to shave your head and, and really go, go after your brain or something. So usually I would just target the forehead if you don't want to, you know, completely shave your head. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not going back. Uh, I'm not going that far. <laughs> exactly, I, yeah. I, at one point I, I was almost completely hairless besides the hair on my head. Oh. I, like, okay. I don't know, years ago, I, I shaved like my entire body, which was extremely uncomfortable, like <laughs> yeah. legs and everything. I, I don't recommend it. I will not, not do that again. Right. Um, but then you're absorbing so much more light, you know, yeah. it's a tough, tough chance. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I get so much sun exposure anyways. I, I mean, yeah, I, I'm outside as much as I possibly can be like when I'm not working on my computer here, I'm outside reading, uh, if I can do work on my phone, I lay outside on my phone doing the work. It's just, it, it, it's so much better to to be outside, which this is all free, right? Yeah. Not, you don't oh, yeah, necessarily have to buy a red light panel, the sunlight. Yeah. And I've, I've done um, blogs about this. You can measure the, the intensity of sunlight, the wavelengths of sunlight. They deliver, it delivers, you know, that, that optical range of 600 nanometers to a thousand nanometers, obviously sunlight gives you the whole spectrum. Um, but it gives you, you know, enough intensity, almost equivalent to what a panel could give you. And, you know, it's balanced and it, and, and, you know, all you have to be cautious about is maybe too much UV exposure, especially if your body's not acclimated to it. Uh, do you ever burn when, when you're out? Rarely. It takes a yeah. lot for me to burn. Yeah. Yeah. I try. I mean, I did some travel in like Manila and, and other countries and I got a few burns, but usually I tan immediately after and, and I'm all right. But even just the other day, I was out um, gardening all day for Memorial Day and I didn't get it. I didn't get a burn at all. I just got a nice tan and it's because my body's prepped with red light therapy it can help you kind of with the UV exposure it actually does prevent uh, burns and, and problems with that. And again, if you do get a burn, it can help you with that recovery and with the inflammation as, as well. So also yep. great during the summer too. So it's not just something you know, everyone wants to like therapy during the winter, but something you can use year round. Um, like I said, for athletic, you know, an athletic boost for sunlight, you know, for, for helping you balance the UV and the sunlight. And, um, you know, if you get a, a wound or a, an ache or a pain or something, it's nice to have around. It's like a, a having that, um, kind of first aid kit. Like that should be one of the first things you should think about when you're trying to improve your healing and recovery. Yep. And, and not only can the red light help heal sunburns if you get them. But real quick, I want to mention some of the things that you can do to avoid uh, sunburns in the first place. In addition yeah. to the red light therapy, uh, avoid seed oils, all those inflammatory garbage oils, avoid those, uh, those increase your susceptibility to sunburns. Also uh, stop wearing sunglasses and lathering up in sunscreen uh, because the sunglasses prevent the wavelengths of light from entering the photoreceptors in your eyes. And that is what tells your body to produce melanin, which is what makes you tan and protects you from the sun. Melanin is like uh, SPF four around there. Uh, so the more melanin you have, the more protected you are from the sun. Same thing with sunscreen that blocks the UVA UVB from hitting your skin. And so 
what happens a lot of times is people go from winter into uh, spring and w- during the winter time, they're inside, not, not a lot of sunlight. And then they go out for spring break or whatever. And then they're wearing sunglasses, they're lathering up in sunscreen and yeah. then they get too much sun exposure all at once. And then they burn. So right. gradually start to increase your sun exposure over time. Watch the sunrise, let your body know how light it is, what time of year it is. And then get like 10 to 30 minute increments throughout the day of sun exposure to build that tolerance. Yeah. Yeah. That's all great. And yeah, the red light, I even, um, one of the studies said it was about SPF 15 in, in one of the studies. It's pretty, pretty crazy. What melanin um, is? Yeah. No, the uh, red light therapy itself is a pre, if you oh, do it before really? exposure and it, it was about uh, SPF 15. I, it's one of the studies on, on if, red light therapy protects your skin and it was it was quite dramatic um yeah and i'd say yeah there's a few antioxidants you can take like vitamin c and vitamin e that's great yep. for balancing you know the issues with the skin and and uh sunburn uh, vitamin a as and well then, copper yeah and, so, and sometimes yeah you if you just gotta wear a hat and i wear like a light white long sleeve shirt you know and you can do that as you're introducing it if you know you're going to be outside in a picnic all day then just wear a long sleeve t-shirt or uh, wear, wear a hat and you don't need to lather up but yeah, all these chemical sunscreens. It's terrible. Yeah. Or just become primal like me and gradually increase your sun exposure. And then you can be outside yeah. all day in the summertime. And then if I do notice that I might start to burn, I just cover up in coconut oil, which is naturally, naturally like SPF two to 10. I couldn't find nice. like a specific number. Um, yeah. So then I'm all oiled up out there in the, in the sunlight, enjoying <laughs> yeah, life, listening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we covered a lot of the, the benefits of red light therapy, uh, how it can help your skin, how it can help heal from sun related skin damage, uh, how it improves uh, muscular recovery, as well as healing from wounds and injuries, how it can help with brain health. I also want to mention sexual performance because this stuff, if you do red light specifically on your balls for dudes, but women also can help if you do it on that area before sex is amazing. It's a game changer. It's like yeah. Viagra, literally, right. Be- because we yeah. mentioned that the vasodilatory effect and the nitric oxide, that's what's happening when you're taking Viagra. It's, it's, it's a vasodilator. So it expands your yep. blood vessels, allows for better blood flow, which is good for both male and female sexual performance. For sure. For sure. And yeah, that's one of the things where we get a lot of, you know, a lot of the publicity for red light therapy has been on testosterone, on improving testosterone levels. You know, sometimes I think that's a hard thing to prove if you, you know, you might need a big study and we don't have a lot, you know, a a big human study that is really proven the testosterone aspect, even though everyone's really getting into that. But yeah, it's almost an immediate, like it's pretty much an immediate benefit like you said, you like just immediately before on, on the genitalia, um, to get that boost of blood flow, get that ATP going, get, get the circulation, get the nitric oxide. And, um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's where you get the immediate, like, okay, something's happening. I don't need to measure, (laughs) I don't need to measure testosterone levels to know that, that there's, there's something going on here. Yeah. Especially if you get one of your smaller panels and then you can just place it directly on those suckers. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's, and that's the thing. It's super convenient. You can try it out. And again, this is another area that some people get concerned about with too much heating on the testicles or, or, you know, too much, too much near infrared or, you know, people say infrared kind of causes heat, but again, we're mostly dealing with non-thermal wavelengths, even if it's the near infrared, it's the shorter wavelengths of near infrared. Um, So you're, you're really not getting much heating again, unless you get really high intensities. There's a couple studies out there that they use really high intensities on like rodent testicles and they caused some problems. And then everyone was circulating that. Yeah. I was like, literally people (laughs) would send it to me and they're like, I can't use this on my nuts. Look at this rodent study. I'll be like, you'd read the intensity and the energy that they put into those road those poor rodents those like you're, poor just, rodents man <laughs> they're just roasting their nuts and then they're like oh my god near infrared it's bad for your nuts like how like why would you do that um so again you'll feel i mean you'll feel if you're getting very warm or, or whatever you can combine it um with some cold therapy before and after yeah. and, and you know we like icing the testicles ice as pack well. on the balls too yeah that combo I, i've tried that ice pack on yeah. the balls and then red light after or simultaneous yeah fantastic 
Right. So, you know, you do, you know, you do want it to be relatively cool, but I really, again, there's a lot of like kind of fear around it. Um, again, you can don't use freeze your balls off in the infrared. Yeah. And you don't want to do too much cold either. Yeah. So again, there's, there's always this balance of not too much of anything and you'll feel it if you're getting too hot or you're using too much of an ice pack, uh, use, you know, you can wrap it up in a towel and let it be more subtle. Um, so yeah, yeah. So the, you know, great tips with, with using the, on the genitals and, and you doing it responsibly, but yeah, all you need is a small panel to do it. You don't need a giant, uh, you know, panel. I mean, obviously you might want a giant panel for a range of different things of workout recovery and energy and things like that, but it's not always necessary. You can get a lot of benefits just from targeted treatments as well. Yeah. I, I like the smaller ones for, for travel as well. Super oh, convenient. Yeah. You can take them anywhere. They're portable. Uh, and I also like that on your website, you give uh, the intensities of all your panels, the different wavelengths that you use and like the recommended distances and correlated times that you should yeah. be spending with it. That's, uh, I think that's amazing because so many people ask like how much time, what's the intensity, how far away should I be? And, and you give us all the recommendations. On the website. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. I'm, I'm just like fully transparent on the website. I think you should know what you're getting before you get it, and not just you know. Sometimes you might get like this this big panel, and then you don't know. Oh, okay, now I gotta set it up and and stand in front of it for a certain amount of time, and what's the distance? And you know, those some of those are my most popular blogs of like what's the distance you should use, how long should you use it, and you know, really break it down. You know, some obviously you usually get guidelines with any product. Um, a lot of times the most, you know, a reasonable amount of time is 10 to 20 minutes. Um, no matter what you're doing, if you're doing a targeted spot, you might just hold it there for 10 or 20 minutes. If you're doing full body, you might do 10 minutes in the front and 10 minutes on the back. Um, 20 minutes seems to be a nice kind of sweet spot mm -hmm. for, for a, a range of different applications and devices. Um, so, you know, that's pretty straightforward. And then the distance, the further away you go, the more the light kind of spreads out. So that's why you're getting less intensity. Um, but, you know, I have a third party lab that measures out the intensity at those different distances. So you can actually, you know, if you want to be really science based about it and understand the safety, um, those numbers are there and I give it to you as accurate as possible. That's something nobody else is doing because most of the other companies are, are using the wrong types of test equipment. They're false, kind of falsifying their intensity numbers so they can have this fallacy of, well, we have the, we have the biggest intensity and we can do this better. Um, but those, again, are, are more of a fallacy. There's no studies that say, oh, more intensity is better. You need the right amount of intensity, not too much or too little. Is that one of the dangers from buying some knockoff random panel on Amazon is the intensity? I'd say, yeah, I mean, you're not going to get, the, I mean, don't even expect to get anywhere close to the intensity of that they're claiming. I've seen some ridiculous numbers. Um, so, yeah, don't even, you know, like, that's out of your mind. Um, and then you, you know, but they might still give you enough, but the, the numbers they're giving you are wrong and it'll be impossible for you to be like mm. dose it correctly. Um, but then you have to worry about things like EMFs. You have to worry about flicker, mm. um, you know, some of these other safety related aspects. Again, they're not really highlighted in the studies because they're using high quality equipment in the studies or they're using lasers. Um, so it's usually not a big problem in the studies. Um, but if we got all these cheaper branded products on the market, they might have higher EMFs. They're not mitigated. Um, you know, uh, you've got different types of electric fields, magnetic fields um, that all my prob products are, are mitigated for. Um, and then, you know, you could have like kind of a stress response from it if you're electromagnetic um, kind of hypersensitive. Sensitive, yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, there's all these kind of, you know, dubious chronic diseases that are being correlated with too much EMF exposure over the long term. So a lot of people, they want a health device and they don't want the risk of a health device causing you new problems. Um, so if you the, put you know, it on your balls, you right, don't want that right. radiation. And then, right. And then you don't want, yeah, you don't want to be scrambling your balls with magnetic fields. <laughs> so like, yeah, there's, I mean, there's some practical aspects of putting it near vital organs. You don't want that EMF exposure um, and, and then flickers. Oh, go ahead. Before we get into flicker, just to clarify, yeah. most of my listeners should be aware of EMFs, but for any new listeners out there, EMF stands for electromagnetic fields and they cause oxidative stress in the body, which 
causes a whole host of issues from uh, brain fog, fatigue, irritability, headaches, uh, to even more chronic issues, like you mentioned, like dementia and Alzheimer's and, and cancer. Um, so have you tested some of the red light panels, uh, some other brands for EMFs and have they oh, been yeah. relatively yeah. high? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I found a knockoff on, on Amazon and I, I did a YouTube video on it a couple of years ago and you can see the numbers are, of the magnetic fields much higher, the electric fields much higher. They just, you know, they don't put, have to put in any effort to, mm. to mitigate it. Cause most um, people don't know, like that's not something yeah. most people would even think about. Yeah, no, I mean, most people don't think about it. And even if they do think about it, a lot of people don't invest in the measurement tools. So you'll never be able to check it yourself. So that's why I do a lot of transparency. I do the measurements, um, a lot of the measurements on my YouTube videos. Um, so you can see that transparency. I have like professional grade EMF meters and yeah, you, you can get pretty high numbers and I, I show it with some of the knockoffs and some of the major brands uh, will, will have pretty high EMFs, especially if you get too close to the panel. Um, so, you know, so yeah, we can measure the EMFs with the panels. You're, you're dealing with more of the, um, uh, lower frequency EMFs rather than the radio frequencies you get from your phone. Um, so it's a little bit different than what you get from your phone, but it still acts as, like you said, a cellular stress on the body. And it's just something that you're, you're trying to calm down and, and ha have an enjoyable time with red light therapy. You don't want to have this other variable that Opposite could be kind of kind of stressing you or your body out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now let's get into flicker because this is something that uh, I'm still learning about. I, I heard about it on a podcast a while back talking about uh, artificial indoor lighting. But uh, first, tell us what it is and then what are the harmful effects of too much yeah. flicker? Yeah. So flicker, um, again, this is as in all our light bulbs and our screens, um, you know, anything that's especially if there's light bulbs that are plugged into our, our normal um, alternating current, our normal plug in outlets run on an alternating current, which means the current's kind of going up and down, up and down. And so you get a residual effect from that up and down motion in your lighting as what's called flicker. It's a modulation of the brightness. It's um, some people call it, you know, a technical term is like a temporal modulation of, of the brightness. And so it goes up and down. But what what's the insidious part is that it's invisible to the human eye most of the time because it's usually at twice the alternating current field. So in the US, that's 60 hertz. So it's 120 hertz is usually the flicker rate of most of your uh, standard light bulbs and even most LED panels. So what happens is our eyes don't see it as flicker because it's too fast. Usually anything above kind of 60 or 70 hertz and hertz just means how many cycles per second. Um, so it goes, you know, 120 times per second, it's on off on off, or it's modulating up and down. It's not fully on off a lot of the times. So the light is modulating up and down, up and down rapidly. And our brains and our eyes are trying to stitch this light together. So understand what's going on in our surroundings. And a lot of times that can really throw you off if you're trying to read a book, if you're trying to concentrate on a task, if you're assembling something, if you're working in a workshop and, and you're working in a floor, you know, a lot of times they introduce these fluorescent tube lights in, you know, in workplaces, you know, 20 in or 30 years ago, and hospitals. Yeah. And schools yeah. and the kids are starting to, you know, kind of get anxious and they get upset. Um, so it's really, it's stressing your brain and stressing your mind, even though you can't see it. Um, and yeah, it can manifest as, uh, as simple as eye strain, headaches, migraines. Uh, if it's really bad, it can trigger seizures. Um, you know, in, in sensitive people that, that have that photosensitive uh, epilepsy. And uh, yeah, you can have anxiety, you can have more stress. And, and even sometimes your neck and your back gets stiff because your brain is kind of holding you still. Wow. Um, so it, it's really, uh, you know, and it's been documented for a very long time, documented with old, t old TVs, the old CRT TVs that work by scanning and rastering, been documented, like I said, at the workplace with when they first rolled out fluorescent bulbs and when they rolled out uh, LED bulbs, they were pretty bad, um, you know, and, and people were complaining about headaches and they were calling it like sick building, sick syndrome. Um, so, you know, more and more regulations have been taken. You know, this is not like EMFs where the governments are ignoring it. Um, the European Union just um, made more stringent uh, flicker regulations recently where they're 
trying to eliminate flicker from most lighting. Um, so it's it's been well documented and well defined of what levels of flicker are acceptable. Um, so anyway, that can happen with LED light panels, you know, as well. So a lot of the original panels on the market and the cheap ones will still have a lot of that flicker. And you can see the flicker if you don't have a test meter. Uh, you can use your phone and use a slow motion video and see the flicker. You, you know, if you go to a store and you can start to see all these lights that are flickering, you're like, oh, my God, no wonder I don't like going to the grocery store because all mm -hmm. these lights are flickering around me, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, so it gets pretty bad. And like I said, a lot of the LED panel manufacturers weren't paying attention to this. And they were selling a lot of high flicker products. And, and again, people might get a bad experience and not realize it's a, it's the flicker. They might be, um, you know, it's straining my eyes. Um, it can give you that perception of a kind of an eye strain issue or headaches or, or other problems. And, it, you know, and again, it becomes more of a neurological kind of issue that your brain's trying to cope with this. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Yet another reason to optimize your light environment, in addition to the circadian rhythm uh, benefits of turning off your lights, or at least getting uh, more circadian rhythm aligned light bulbs, like uh, red light bulbs, or I use Himalayan salt lamps, um, yep. which are many times better than fluorescent uh, overhead right, lighting. Right. And that's one of the things I like about your panels is you can just turn it on and it just stays on. So you can use yeah. it to like light up your room at night. And, and that's what, yeah, I noticed a lot of my customers for, for years have been using their panels also as kind of an ambient light at night because they're all super low flicker. They're red light. So it's better for your circadian rhythm because you don't want blue light or you don't want green light at night. And so if you've got a red light panel, it's got this multi-purpose kind of use that you could potentially use it as as an ambient light at night and with that maybe um you just want to directly aim it at you because you it, it is kind of bright and you can get some of that glare and that can be stimulating even with red light um so you, a lot of times if you can aim it at the wall or aim, aim it at the ceiling so it's kind of just bouncing off the wall and it's more gentle that way so um again multi-purpose use for for the red light panels as well as, as getting the low flicker red light um, at night. And then I started branching into selling more of uh, some book lights and, and red lights and night lights as well, because I noticed more people were using my panels for night lights. And so I wanted to give some people some affordable options that were a little bit more practical. Sweet. I am going to pull up your website right now and, and we can go over those different options. Uh, sure. But before we do that, I, I wanted to ask about uh, timing, not duration, but so you kind of just touched on this. You don't want to do it in the evening, uh, for yep. the brightness aspect of it. Uh, what about any of the other, like, if you do this in the evening, do you think that it could impact sleep at all due to the, the energy production? Yeah. Yeah. Um, some people say, yeah, it could be too stimulating if you're doing it on the eyes, on the face, on the head. Um, if you do it at night, you know, too close to bedtime, it could be pretty stimulating. It could be shutting down your melatonin stimulation, you know, uh, production the yeah. same way, you know, any, any light can do. Um, so, but there is kind of, uh, you know, again, kind of a, a bio individual nature about it. Some people love doing red light therapy at night and they do it just before bed. Maybe they're not aiming it directly at the face and the eyes mm. and they love it. I mean, it can really wind you down. Maybe it's like a campfire or something like that, um, for sleep. Yeah. Um, so, so you can get that. Yeah. Good point. Because the, the sunset is, I mean, that's when the, the red wavelengths of light are highest. So if you were to do the red light in the evening, I would just wear your blue light blockers and maybe not face the red light. And it would, yeah, it would just be kind of like a campfire. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I treat, I usually, you know, like I said, avoid my eyes, but I'll do my chest. Maybe I'll do my lower back. Um, if you do like your chest and through your sternum, and thymus that can help stimulate melatonin production like through your organs. Um, so there's, there's some biohacks you can do it. So you can do it at night. Um, but a lot of times I think it's great to do it in the morning as more of a wake up light. Yeah. You do it on your face and your body and you get that energy, especially yeah. if you can't go outside. Um, then it's a great way to start your day and anchor your circadian rhythm. You get that boost of alertness and brightness in the morning. Um, so morning is, is a great time to do it, but evening, you know, you can make that work as well. Yeah. That that's when I do it. 
first thing in the morning yep. uh, after my meditation, stand in front of the red light panel. I also combine it with the human charger, which is an yep. in-ear blue light device. So I get the the one two combo with the blue light and the red light. And man, does that thing wake you up? Um, uh, that and a cold shower too. Like mm-hmm. coffee is going to be an option, not a necessity. Once you start optimizing right. your circadian rhythm, using the red light, getting the sun exposure, it's uh, yeah, it, it and it just feels so good to wake up first sure. thing in the morning like that. It, it feels like I I feel an almost instant sort of flushing of the body because you wake up you're you're stagnant you you haven't been moving all night and then i go stand in front of that thing it's like instant circulation i can feel the blood flowing through my body it might not be that instant i don't know that's how it feels like to me i i feel like like it's waking me up feels really good no it's like yeah like that warming effect yeah exactly all right so now i'm gonna share my screen so those of you who are watching the youtube video you can see this is the uh gemba red website and we've got all these different light panels so uh these were the book lights you were talking about right yeah i have two different book lights there the mini one that's super convenient and then, uh, yeah, the one on the other side, that's a, a bigger one. And a, I do this very mindfully because these are bigger than normal book lights because red light is just naturally dimmer. And so if it's your first time trying to use a, a red book light, it's going to seem really dim. So that's why I made them bigger than normal. So there's a lot of thought even going into these night lights. Um, mm-hmm. I got a plug in. Yeah. You're, you're hovering over the, um, the, the, desk light which is a lot more brightness and if you put on you know like a bedside table or or if you, you want to work at night and have like this red light um for working at night that's great or sometimes i just turn it on in the morning when i'm first getting up um and then yeah just the plug-in night light super simple i had to mitigate the flicker out of that product too like you know you had to like really you can get these cheap uh night lights but you gotta eliminate the flicker too yep and then this is the one that I have, the the yep. full body overclocked. And then this is one that's just slightly smaller than the overclocked. Yeah. yeah and the, the reboot is slightly, it's a few inches smaller, but that's about the standard size that like most of my competitors sell like Juve or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the standard size of the reboot. But I think, you know, just adding a few more inches, like for the one that you have um, really helps cover like pretty much the whole body. Without, I like that one because you know, I'm I'm taller. Like it covers yeah, my yeah. full face all the way down to just below my ball. So we're getting all the important parts. Yeah, and you know, and yeah, I'm I'm trying not to like, oh, you got to get these modular setups and all these different panels that you link together. Like just one panel mm-hmm. should get you know ninety percent of your body, and that should be ideal. And then or the f- one side of your body. Talk to us about these next generation panels yeah yeah i came out with those uh a few of those like the beacon panel that's um you know kind of one of my first panels that i truly made ultra low emf because i was able to remove the power supply and make that external um took the fans out um made it it's like thin it's lightweight it's got a built-in stand um so it's really great um it's it's you know kind of a metal frame to it that's the beacon panel yeah um great uh just a great panel and again yeah you can just set it up and it's sturdy um built-in stand and everything and then i've got a few other mini panels that kind of take on that same concept of um having external power supply so they're super low emf and then also you know just being more convenient more portable um easy to you know use if you just want to use it right on the skin yeah Um, this one is super good for travel this tiny one the spacer Yep. Spacer comes and that even comes with a travel case. So um, that's got a nice little travel case and it plugs into any USB outlet. So it doesn't have a built-in battery, but you just plug it into any, any USB, which could be a travel uh, battery bank for like what you use to charge your phone while you travel. You can plug it right into that and have it on the go. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Sweet. Well, very cool. Uh, yeah, I recommend everybody get a red light panel. It, if nothing else, the spacer, because you can travel with it. It's portable uh, yep. and you can do mini treatments with that. Like you can do a treatment on your face then you can do a treatment on like if you, I don't know, got a sore muscle somewhere, you can do a treatment there, like little spot treatments, do it on your balls, take it in. Right. And, and right in between there is is what I have called the vector 
Um, and that's, uh, I think, 259 And that one's like really nice. You can sit it on a desk or, or use it kind of, kind of um, uh, on a desk or, or in person. So that's like a little bit bigger because, you know, everyone wants something a little bit bigger. So I've got two different vector models. This is the one with just the red 670 nanometers. So this one's super popular for eye health. And again, you can just stand it on your desk or your bedside table. And then, and then the other vector that has four wavelengths, it's got a timer built in. It's got, um, you know, selectable wavelengths. Um, so it's really nice kind of setup. It gives you all the nice features in one small panel. And again, it's more portable. You can use it for targeted treatment. You can use it on your desk for facial treatments. Um, so, you know, I really like, you know, all these different smaller panels because they're so much more convenient. You can set them up wherever you want and, and you know, move them around if you want. Yeah, this is a really cool one. So you've got the four different wavelengths, which you length, which you list, yep. uh, which is perfect because I always recommend getting in between 630 and 850. So you've got that range yep. there. Uh, and then, yeah, ultra low EMF, almost no flicker. And then you've got the everything is listed here. That's what I like. You're, you're so transparent about everything that's in and then the recommended distances, all of yeah. the good stuff. Right. All the different dif distances, the intensity measured, the flickers professionally measured, you know, and it's super, always super low. Um, you know, again, uh, we, you know, we really go above and beyond to get as much as we can professionally measured to get you the real data and, and have something an ideal in an ideal world. If you're trying to compare this to another company, they would have, accurate third-party data and you could compare it to, to different companies it's like if you're shopping for a computer and you want to know oh i want a higher processor speed or i want so much memory to it like you should be able to look at all these parameters and understand them what's the intensity what's the wavelengths what's the flicker what's the emf and just you know and what's the size and things like that and, and this one um, looks pretty yeah. small too like you could absolutely travel with this one too Oh yeah. That one, I mean, that one can fit pretty much in the palm of your hand, like as well. So it's, it's a super great um, size and pack in a bunch of uh, LEDs in one panel. Wow. Well, yeah, it's only 249. That was, that was Perfect. Right. And then check this out. Use code captain Morgan and that bumps the price down. Yep. 10% off uh, your whole order with, with captain Morgan. There we go. Special discount for you guys listeners of the captain's lifestyle podcast i hook you guys up so andrew thank you so much for coming on the show and enlightening my audience on the benefits of red light therapy what's something you want to leave us with either something that i didn't ask you that i should have something you're excited about could be anything um yeah i mean we've got a lot of great content I've, i'm working on to help people get uh, more accurate measurements, um, either with um, cheaper tools to, to measure your own panels or um, more tips and, and how, you know, try to increase the transparency of this industry. And, you know, one of the things I just call, you know, people to action of is trying to hold more companies accountable and, and be more honest and be more transparent and use your dollars to support companies that are trying to do the right things and, and you know, being transparent and being honest. And that's how you can really change the world. And, you know, unfortunately, we assume that all companies in the biohacking sphere are have our best interest at heart. Um, but they're a company. They're trying to make money. You got to got to really scrutinize everyone. And you can scrutinize me, but I'm fully transparent. You, if you want to find out something on me, it's already posted online. So, um, <laughs> you know, you can, you can do that. And, you know, I, I just encourage everyone to take that extra step and, and do their diligence and, and you know, find what works for you and that will have more checks and balances it doesn't have to be a malicious thing you can just say hey you know we're all checking out each other's backs and holding each other accountable yep love it you guys know that i am all about supporting uh quality brands right that's that that's who i interview on the show right so um absolutely uh, check out gemba red uh if you choose to buy red light panel I would choose Gemba Red. Use code Captain Morgan for a discount. Uh, if you are skeptical about the benefits of red light, I say just go outside and stand in the sun, see how good you feel. For sure. For <laughs> and sure. after that, you're going to want your own indoor red light panel. Use whenever yep. you want, especially first thing in the morning. Feels amazing. But Andrew, thank you again for coming on the show. Uh, look forward to talking with you in person soon. Yeah, thanks so much. We'll make it happen. 
for sure. Right. 